I was uh, planning uh, to write something about science and I was studying the history of physics and the history of science and I came across a quotation by Leonardo da Vinci which, which is now uh, the motto of, of my first book on Leonardo and uh, which is sort of his scientific manifesto. He says, I will first do some experiments before going any further um, to see how phenomena behave and to deduce their behavior from the experiments. And this is how all the speculators about natural phenomena should proceed. So he defines his empirical method and when I saw this in the early 1970s, I thought immediately that this is really what we now call the scientific method and Leonardo you know, should really be called the first scientist. And then uh, you know, 20 years later, in the mid-1990s, I, I saw uh, an exhibition of his drawings in London at, uh, at the um, Buckingham Palace Museum where uh, they exhibited um, drawings from the Windsor Collection, which is one of the largest collections of his drawings. And uh, there I realized that uh, he compared these patterns, you know, spirals in the growth of human hair, spirals in water vortices, spirals in the growth of plants. And I thought, well, his science is really a science of patterns. And by that time, in the mid-90s, I had written a lot about systems theory and complexity, patterns of nature, patterns of organization. And so I thought that Leonardo's science should really be examined from that point of view of 20th and 21st century science. And again, another 10 years passed without my doing this, but finally I got down to it, uh, you know, around maybe six, seven years ago. And... Uh, this hunch that I had that his science is a science of patterns similar to our systems theory and complexity theory was confirmed. What I discovered, what I didn't uh, imagine, uh, was that Leonardo's science is essentially a science of life. The quest for the nature and origin of life is at the bottom of all the branches of his science. And so I also discovered Leonardo the ecologist and eco-designer. In Leonardo's time, when he was a young apprentice uh, in Florence, uh, science as we understand it now did not exist. Uh, science in the sense of a body of knowledge acquired through a certain method, the empirical method. That's really what he created practically single-handedly, <clears throat> not only to do systematic experiments where he varied the various variables of the experiment systematically, but also to construct theoretical models to, 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 to have you know, simplified situations, modeling more complex situations. So all of that, which is now a, an essential part of the modern scientific method, is something that, that Leonardo originated. And so uh, this, of course, then was uh, created again uh, 200 years later, 100 years later by Galileo, and then 200 years later by Newton, and then there was Francis Bacon, the whole era of the scientific revolution. So in terms of method, Leonardo did the same as the great scientists who came after him you know, in the scientific revolution. But the content of his science is, is very different. The content <clears throat> is not mechanistic. It's a science of organic forms, a science of nature's shapes and transformations. And uh, this was actually a big discovery for me. And I can pinpoint this to, I don't know exactly when it happened, but I know, uh, you know where and how it happened. When I studied Leonardo's manuscripts, I came across a passage where he says, he talks about painting, and he says that painting for him is bo both an art and a science, because in order to portray the forms of nature, he says he has to understand them intellectually, he has to study them. And so, you know, 
the study of nature is both art and science. And he wrote, painting em embraces in itself all the forms of nature. And that to me was the key. I thought now I had found the key that Leonardo's science is a science of the forms of nature. And then later on I realized that when he says the forms of nature, he means living forms. Uh, principally. He means the forms of the living earth, the forms of plants, the forms of, of the animal body in motion, uh, all of which he studied. And so uh, this, uh, the fact that Leonardo's science is a science of living forms, a science of life, is not well understood by historians of science. And here I deviate from most Leonardo scholars, not all, but most. And the reason why this is a very subtle uh, point is that we all know that Leonardo was a mechanical genius. Leonardo invented hundreds of machines and mechanical devices. He was a brilliant mechanical engineer. And during his life, he was more famous or as famous as a mechanical engineer as he was as a painter. And so, you now today there are still uh, many, many exhibitions where you can see wooden models of his machines. So everybody knows that, that Leonardo is a brilliant mechanical engineer, but his view of the world was not mechanistic. And that's a very, a very subtle point. He, he knew that mechanics had its part to play, and he wrote, for instance, <clears throat> that um, uh, nature has given animals mechanical instruments, meaning the bones, uh, the tendons, the muscles, those are nature's mechanical instruments. And he says, without those, animals could not move. And in order to study the bones and tendons and muscles and nerves, he had to study mechanics. So he studied mechanics and he said the, the most noble role of the mechanical sciences is to be able to portray the movements of animals. So he saw mechanics in service of the science of life. And of course in subsequent centuries we had exactly the opposite. The science of life was subsumed under mechanics and we had a mechanistic view of uh, the human organism, a mechanistic view of nature um, uh, created by, you know, Descartes and, and Newton. Uh, 